The alien space rings have sought out various individuals and they are now calling themselves the Mandarins. But there is another individual trying to get all of the rings in all of them. Want to stop Tony Stark? Boy, this is going to get messy. Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues, and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read it dramatically back to you, all durations of the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Last time, Tony Stark had discovered that the Mandarin rings had gained sentience and they were out to get him. He'd also started a sentient city known as Troy with his brother Arno, putting his AI in it and now calling it Helen. Our story begins with Tony Stark fighting a man who was a conductor for a musical about Iron Man. But after they found out that he made Iron Man sound like a pervert, they replaced him, and he kind of took it poorly. In in response to this, he received a Mandarin ring, since the sentient Mandarin rings are out to get Tony Stark, so anyone with anything against Tony Stark is getting a ring. Just as the conductor was getting an upper hand on Tony Stark, a purple light appears, and that's when the conductor is struck from behind by another ring user, Malekith. Malekith is a hunter of other users, and he's taking the rings for himself, and he did so by cutting off the hands of other users and taking their rings. Tony begins to get up from the conductor's last attack, but Malekith has already taken the conductor's hand and vanished. Tony then calls up his brother Arno to let him know that he just encountered Melikith. So Arno asks if they should be contacting Thor, and Tony tells him, not just yet. I want to go see a specialist on this. Over in London, Abigail Burns, who did have a ring in her last adventure, but now doesn't, receives a message from Arno telling her that he's sorry for how things happened. But he's working on something that may help people, and he wanted her to look at it. At first, she rejects the offer, but Arno tells her that this has been a project of his for a while, and he would like the help. Abigail says that she is actually about to write an article about Tony, but from the standpoint of someone who fought him. But she would rather hear more about Arno. Over in Dark Angel's lab, Dark Angel is developing a means to stun the rings. It's kind of a giant rifle, and she's also working on a way to send Tony to the realm of the Dark Elves. The thing is, with the teleporter, it can only be used three times, mainly for things to restabilize, and Meliketh's sorcerers can detect a magical disturbance. So, since this is going to be a stealth mission, they have one warp there, one warp to send equipment to stun the rings, and lastly, a warp for Tony to return with the rings. To make situations even worse, Tony has to go in a special suit so that he can't be detected. Once everything is ready, Dark Angel uses the teleporter and sends Tony off. Except, it teleported him into the middle of Meliketh's court. Tony begins to fight off all of the Dark Elves, but Meliketh uses one of the rings to blast Tony in the shoulder. He then escapes using his jets to fly through the ceiling to some nearby woods. He then asks Dark Angel the next teleporter is ready because he needs his supplies. She suggests that he should just return home, but he tells her no, he can still do this, just send him the gun. Meliketh gives three of his four rings to his three closest hunters to have them track down Tony. They track everything right to him, but before they have a chance to attack, Tony fires the rifle, stunning the group. He then checks on the elves, takes one of their rings, and after putting it away, he's shocked by another hunter, Snaggy, who knocked down the gun, destroying it. Tony goes into stealth mode, blending into his surroundings and vanishing. With one ring missing, Meliketh calls out to Tony, telling him that he can't escape. Tony then calls up Dark Angel, telling him to send him a suit. She tells him that if she sends him a suit, he'll be using his last gate so he can't come home. And he tells her to give him a goddamn suit now. He's not leaving until he's done. As Meliketh begins to close in on Tony, they see a red flash, and then the hunters see Tony, now suited with his armor, ready to fight. The group of hunters begin to surround Tony, but Tony begins to take all of them out while Snaggy is sneaking around him. She informs Tony that she is like the wind, and she dances between the raindrops, and Tony fires a laser hitting her, telling her to meet his targeting system. Snaggy gets up, and using her ring, she shoots electricity at Tony, but as she moves in to kill him, he tells her that his suit is like a giant lightning conductor, and he grabs her arm. He begins to burn her arm, and Snaggy begs him to stop, and she gives gives him a ring just to let her go. Tony tells her it's a deal and she begins to run off. Meliketh finally steps in to finish things using his ring, which can transmute things through alchemy to gold. And he uses it to try and turn Tony's suit into gold. But as Meliketh grabs him, Tony tells him that illusions are not just an elf specialty. And he jumps back in, knocking Meliketh to the ground, taking his ring. Meliketh realizes that he has nothing to defend himself with. And just before Tony swings down on him, Meliketh vanishes. With Dark Angel's help, Tony is able to trace Meliketh back to his lair. But as he gets close, he sees the hole that Meliketh made to escape, only now it's a much bigger hole. Tony guesses that there is someone just as mad at Meliketh as he is, and they're chasing him. Underground in his lair, Meliketh finds the last hunter returning, and he takes his ring back. Her ring is the ability to become invisible, which he thinks would be perfect, but when he tries to use it, it tells him that it needs a recharge. Meliketh asks, why does the ring not have a charge? And that's when Meliketh notices that she was followed by Thor. Meliketh states that it's impossible for an Asgardian to be here, but Thor tells him, nah. It was actually an illusion from the 
the Mandarin 8, and with him, the rest of the other Mandarins arrive. Tony begins to make his way through the lair, but down below in the lair, Melikith continues to see these illusions that are being created by the Mandarin 8, the Asgardians, beating him down. Melikith appears before Tony, and Tony moves into attack, and Melikith tells him, wait, we need to talk. Melikith explains that if he gives Tony the ring, just take the other Mandarins away from here. He's done with this whole mess. Tony begins to walk away, and the rest of the Mandarins show up and begin fighting Melikith. With Dark Angel's assurance and the ability to get one more charge for a teleport, Tony begins to fight off the other Mandarins, getting them off of Melikith. And as promised, Melikith gives Tony the ring and then vanishes. Tony then teleports back home. He heads over to the core of his city to drop off the four rings that he managed to take away from Melikith. Helen, the AI in charge of the city, mentions to Tony that while he was gone, Abigail Burns published a blog post about Arno. Even though it didn't mention that the two of them were brothers, he should probably read it. He rushes over to Troy, the city of the future, to speak with Arno about the blog post. As it turns out, Arno is attempting to remake Extremis, which is not a good idea, and Tony tells him that it's completely irresponsible. While they argue about it for a few minutes, they both decide that they need to focus on the matters at hand, the situation with the rings. Over at the Unnatural History Museum in New York, Mark is asking Pepper about Tony and where he's been. Pepper tells him that since he went to Elfland to get the rings, him and Arno have been working on something, but there really isn't much to say about it. Mark tells Pepper that he loves her. He has no idea how she ever put up with Tony, and Pepper says that she's not sure how he put up with the angry journalist Abigail. Mark says he didn't put up with it, that's why they split up, and then he asks Pepper what does she think that Tony is up to, and Pepper says probably wasting time saving the world. Back in Arno's lab, Tony asks for help from the last person that he wanted to ask for help from, Abigail Burns. The journalist who was out to get Stark Industries and the journalist who originally got one of the Mandarin rings until her hands were cut off by Melikith. But while they work out their plan, down below the Earth's surface in the Mole Man Kingdom, Mole Man, one of the Mandarin eight, discusses with the other Mandarins about their next course of action, which is to finally take down the city of Troy. But as the group talks, Tony tells them that they won't be doing that. Exile notices that the signal is coming from up above them, and he sends Mandarin 10 off to find them. But as he gets close to the exit, he turns and he asks, how did they even find him? And he gets shot in the back. Then the voice of Abigail, wearing Tony's master ring, tells him, just the old-fashioned way, an investigative journalist sticking her nose around. After she takes Mandarin 10's ring, she radios back to Tony that it's time for them to move in. And Tony moves in with his suit, and Arno, using the technology of their city, begins using his suit to construct and start an attack. Arno smashes a giant hole into Mole Man's fortress, and Tony's suits begin firing on everyone. Tony then flies in to find the liar Mandarin holding someone hostage. Tony says, don't. I'll do anything if you let the hostage go. And then the liar begins to lift his hood off. And Tony realizes that it's Mark, one of his friends, and their PR agent, and he's holding Pepper hostage. Everyone begins fighting to take the rings off of everyone else, and Tony continues to try and reason with Mark. But Mark tells him that it's because of his hatred for what Tony did to Pepper that allowed him to get the ring. Tony begins to try and get closer, but Mark tells him not a step closer. If you do, I'll kill Pepper. But Tony doesn't listen, and instead he readies his repulsors, and he aims them at Mark. Mark shouts that he's not lying, and Tony says he knows, and he fires the repulsor through Pepper and Mark. Tony knew that Mark wouldn't put her in danger, and the liar was just protecting Pepper. Tony kicks Mark in the head, and he says, screw you for making me see that. Everyone else continues to take back the last of the rings, and Mole Man begins to escape on his own. That's when Mole Man's ring tells him congratulations. The other Mandarins have been neutralized. You are now Mandarin Prime! And Mole Man says that he doesn't think so, and he throws the ring away and escapes with the rest of his mole people. The ring tries to find a new bearer, but it ends up flying right into Tony's grasp. Later, Tony returns the recorder unit that he took, and he learns that it was the reason that the rings appeared on the Earth in the first place. The recorder unit upgraded the firmware in the rings, causing them to seek out and destroy something that they thought was harming the Earth. And Tony, being an extremely important individual to the Earth, was their target. As the aliens, the owners of the recorder, leave now that they have their recorders back, Tony and Arno finally get to relax and enjoy a cup of coffee. And Arno asks if they'll be okay. And Tony tells them, of course, two Stark brothers on one planet? What could go wrong? Now, this is the storyline that led us right up to Secret Wars. So basically, this happened, then Secret Wars happens, and then we go into the new Invincible Iron Man storyline, which I'm personally loving, and we've already done a video on. I'll link the follow-up video down below, and I hope you guys enjoy it, and I hope you guys enjoyed these storylines, and their weird attempt at having weird space rings. What does that make me think of? Anyway, follow me on Twitter at Comic Story and Instagram at Comic Story, and don't forget, if you enjoy manga, we are now doing a manga channel known as Manga Story, and where you get manga every Monday and Friday. I'll see you guys over there, and have a good night.